Hi everybody! Today I'm painting a small sketch of tulips in watercolor. So I have started with the pencil sketch and I have the flowers right in front of me. I'm doing the narratives for this video because I tend to get uh, distracted if I talk while I paint. So let's start with the brushes. These are the brushes I'm going to be using for this sketch and I'll talk more about them later on in this video. I start by wetting the petals with what's supposed to be clean water, but because I didn't clean my jar, so you can see that the water is a little contaminated. Putting colors on a damp area of the paper is called a wet on wet or wet into wet technique. For the base layer, I'm using a mixture of lemon yellow plus sap green and lemon yellow plus permanent red light. All the colors are from the Van Gogh watercolor set, so I'm using their names. But if you're using paints from another brand, the names can be different. I'm mixing permanent red light and matter lake deep to create the real color of the tulips. As you can see that the paper is still damp, so I'm not getting a lot of hard edges. It sort of brings out the softness of the petals. At this stage, I'm not trying to create detail work. Sometimes when I accidentally put down too much paint, I would clean and dry the brush and use it to lift out the excessive paint. This technique can also be used to create lights in dark areas. The brush I'm using is from Raphael. So Raphael is a famous French brand well known for making quality paint brushes. This one is made of rare hair and it's from the 803 series called Petit Gris Pur. It has a great capacity of holding water. It is absolutely one of my favorite brushes and just perfect for delicate works. I paint the second flower using the same wet on wet technique. This time I start with the matter lake deep. I'm also dropping a bit of sap green on the petals because if you observe the tulips, you'll see that the bottom part of the petals is actually colorless. So I'm trying to create some green reflections from the stem. When I'm painting, I'm always reminding myself that painting is not about what you look at, but about what you see. Plus, I usually avoid using the same color for the entire flower. This can make your painting look a bit dull and lifeless. So the name Matter Lake Deep comes from the Van Gogh palette. It's a funny name, but I like it. Like I mentioned earlier, the colors don't usually have the same names depending on different brands, because it's the manufacturer that chooses the names for the palette. So you can use Quinacridone Red or Opera Rose instead if you have those. I'm now mixing a denser paint with permanent red light and matter lake deep to lay down some more vibrant washes. You probably noticed that I changed my brush into a smaller one. This is the brush that comes with the Van Gogh box. It's called a rigor brush, which is normally used for detail work. It doesn't hold as much water as the round brush, but it has a very pointy tip, making it much easier to do fine lines and details. I'm using this brush because the second flower is smaller, and I want to do some edges of the petals. To create a darker tone, I'm throwing some viridian green into the previous red paint. And if you think the color is not dark enough, you can always add some paints gray. I'm using this color and dropping a few lines and dots to make some textures of the flower. I'm using sap green and a little bit of yellow ochre for the stem. I 
I'm switching my brush back to paint the leaves. First of all, I lay down an even wash by mixing sap green and lemon yellow. Then I add some petal color and viridian. Now that my first flower is dry, I can begin painting the second layer. And since I'm painting on dry paper, the colors will look more intense than the first layer. I'm also loading less water this time. It's hard to explain how much water I load each time. It comes from an accumulation of practice. But just keep in mind, the more water you load, the more faded the color is going to be when dried off. Adding layers in watercolor is a lot of fun. By doing this, you create textures, lights, shadows, etc. Lights and shadows are what makes your object more dimensional. It's important to determine a light source before you start painting. This way, you can find your shadows accordingly. For example, you can see that I'm painting the inner petals darker than the outer ones. The color of shadows usually comes from the complementary color, for example, purple and yellow, green and red. But there are so many factors that can trick your eyes and affect your judgment, so it's really not easy to paint. I'm still learning about it myself. Like the flowers, the leaves and stems are not only restricted to green or yellow. They can show a variety of colors because of many things like lighting, reflection, and the influence from around. Even if it's not showing directly to the naked eyes, you can still use your imagination. For example, try adding some purple to the leaves under or next to a cluster of purple grapes. It can pull the whole painting together. And you also want to pay attention to the tones. Different tones and colors make the painting more interesting. For the leaves, you'll see me using these colors.
my final step is the shadows on the table. You have a couple of choices for this. I tend to gravitate towards violet and ultramarine deep. So I'm using a mixture of these colors here. And with some finishing touch, the sketch is done. I'm sorry if some of my voice is fuzzy and blurry. It's the first time I'm dubbing my video and I don't have a recording device so I'm speaking directly to the computer. I hope this video is helpful if you're learning to paint flowers. I hesitated about making a tutorial because I've never had any formal art training and I'm not usually showing the correct demonstration. So it's more like my way of painting flowers. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.